Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, I wanted to just share with you how I practice my skills, whether it's major or minor or pretty much anything. The main goal which I have when I practice these things is just figure out what you're trying to do with the skill. Okay, so a lot of people think that this exercise is the end all of the whole process of knowing a scale like E major or E flat major. That if you actually ask me is a linear way of playing the scale that is just going up and going down. Maybe you haven't covered other aspects like skipping some notes, maybe going in thirds. <laughs> which is also a serious game on the piano as well as the guitar, any instrument really. If you skip notes, it's a lot trickier. So this lesson focuses on linear playing and inevitably we all have to go through that, right? We all have to play the scale up and down and that's how we learn it and that's how we are taught it. But I just wanted to look to share with you how I end up practicing my scales and uh, being from India, we have a lot of scales, if you think about it. In Carnatic music, you have so many ragas and we, we have 72 parent or what we call as Mela Karta ragas. So those are, that's a lot to learn, right? So if you have to practice these so many scales, you have to really figure it out first linearly. That's ascending and descending, right? Arohan and Avarohan, as we say in India, right? So the first thing I'm going to look at is the general problem of people who practice scales, which used to be me, which maybe some of you watching this, or maybe some of you haven't yet done it, would hopefully gain something out of this. So if you take the C major scale, for instance... That's eight notes, but you may argue a scale has only seven notes. That's true. A scale has only seven notes, but to create that completion, we add the final C or the octave, uh, but that doesn't make a scale to have eight notes. That's just the repetition of the Sa or the root. We just repeated it. So we kind of now have an eight note set. Right now, what do you do when you come down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And most students will end up going. So you need to start from the top. So now the problem here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you repeat it again by repeating the note either on the top or repeating the root at the bottom. Now, if you ask me, that prevents the flow. So what a student ends up doing, probably without knowing it, is just kind of fly and just take a gap, you know. But in this exercise, I just want to introduce you to my way of practicing skills, which I think will remove that gap or remove that repetition of the octave and thereby making it a lot more musical and getting you to think and you'll, you're you definitely going to enjoy this. And I hope you enjoy this uh, even more than the, the traditional scale approach, which is which doesn't really have any timing goal or timing requirement generally. Well, you could do that, but yeah, generally it doesn't have it. And I have done a lot of lessons on our YouTube channel on how to practice the major scale, how to practice the minor scale. Uh, you can head over to the playlist where I would definitely encourage you to watch all my lessons on that, where we skip notes, we even go linearly, we divide it. And uh, some of those lessons were a bit on the older side where we just shot with very basic equipment. Uh, we'll probably do another uh, go with those videos as well at some point. Anyway, so let's get cracking with our exercise then. This exercise is going to be very simple. It's just going to be the scale up and down, adding a note and trying to create a very creative sound because you don't want to just go through the motions of going up, going down and not having enjoyed it. So I hope you will enjoy it and the left hand is going to also come to the party at the end of the lesson by playing some interesting chords, some rhythm patterns which I think are very go-to and what I say bankable. That means you need to <clears throat> invest it, store it and 
it grows on you. It can, you can use it for pretty much anything. Okay, before we get cracking, it'll be great if you can subscribe to our channel, hit that bell for regular notifications and do consider following us on Patreon for these lesson notes and pretty much all the other handwritten notes. Um, <clears throat> a recommendation on Patreon for Indian subscribers would be to consider our one year plan because there is some kind of regulations going on where you cannot do a monthly cycle. So if you'd like to do the yearly plan, consider that. All of you could consider a yearly Patreon plan. You also get a very good discount there. So head over there and check it out. Enough of that. Let's get started. So for the lesson, as you may all know, I don't do C major and I tend to, maybe I don't like it or maybe I'm not good at it. I don't know. I just don't take C major. So I'm going to introduce you to a interesting way of practicing skills. Whenever you practice them, work on the concept of cousin skills, as I call them, right? Now, the way the piano is laid out, if you take the namesake skills, in this exercise, I'm going to limit our study to E major and its namesake major scale. What is that? I just call it namesake just because it has the same alphabet name. That will be E flat major. So you have E major and E flat major. And you will find that they have different fingering but very similar shapes. In fact, it's like they are polar opposites of each other. If you look at E major, it'll be white note, black note, black note, white, white, black, black, white. If you visualize this using the diagram we have in front of you, which I call as the piano worm, which I think is a cool name, you'll find that it's basically two boats which are sort of turned upside down, you know, uh, in the E major domain. While in the E flat major scale, it's black, white, white, black. So that creates like a boat shape and then black, white. You get the same shape there. And then, so two boats within the first four notes. So E major upside down boats, E flat major boats, normal boats on the, I mean, not sunk. So uh, this is what you could derive from any scale. Now, why do we emphasize on this? The piano worm is extremely crucial because in the heat of the moment when you're playing the piano, you have to throw away your theory. That's what we all do on all instruments. In the heat of the moment, when you play your instrument, your chosen weapon of choice, you will have to just play. You'll have to deliver, you'll have to execute your skills as per the situation and as per what which musician you collaborate with and so on. So you really need to be glued to the notes. Okay, and that slight distinction, oh, this scale has a black note at the second, that scale has a white note at the third, that small thing just absolutely messes with us as piano players, right? A guitar player doesn't have to go through that because it's string-based and thus it's pattern-based. But we don't see that the piano is also pattern-based, right? And people don't emphasize that a lot, especially the folks who start their journey with the C major scale, which I call a shapeless scale. Because there is no pattern, it's just white notes, right? Which is why I always encourage students in my lessons to, to not go the C major route. You can eventually do C major, but why start with it? Then you're setting a very biased system towards learning the scale. All 12 scales on the piano, even if they are major scales, and you may argue, oh, they all sound the same because it's major. I can play like a twinkle twinkle on E flat versus C. So you people argue, why do you need that? Why do you need to learn on so many scales when the melody itself is the same, you know? So, well, you'll have to see. You'll have to play on the piano and you'll realize that each scale gives you a completely different playing surface. Very similar to, let's say, a tennis player like uh, Nadal being brilliant on clay versus a Federer being the genius on grass, you know? It's exactly that concept. So, 
the that's how i look at my 12 skills maybe i make different kinds of music on e flat and very very different music on g and other such uh, skills right so that was a reason or the uh, hopefully to motivate you to learn all your 12 skills very very important so for this lesson we've chosen e major and e flat major just a quick recap e major has a shape and e flat major has the same shape but like a polar opposite right it's just turned upside down so let's first get acquainted with the fingering for both the scales i'm sure some of you who've been playing the piano probably already know let's revise for those of you who haven't follow along with me so you go for any white scale do like a play 3 up to the third or the g and then cross your thumb because you don't have a million fingers so you just have five so you have to cross in order to kind of go upward and you have to cross over the thumb in order to go downward so if i go e major up what did i do there again slowly 1 2 3 cross don't cross suddenly cross in a nice flow with a nice glide sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa end on the pinky and descend sa ni dha pa ma and then drop your middle ga re sa one more time ga ma pa dha ni sa ni dha pa ma ga re sa also I encourage you to sing it either with swaras or na 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 or do re mi fa so whatever language you prefer okay coming to e flat with e flat a general rule of thumb is don't use the thumb at the first note especially when the notes are black color try to avoid it uh, because you want to save the thumb for the upcoming white note so whenever white follows black the rule of thumb is use the thumb so you go e flat f g a flat b flat now again white follows black i use the thumb again go up Now you come down. Ni da pa ma ga re sa. That's E flat. Quite easy to to play once you just think about the fact that save the thumb for a white note which follows the black note. You can do this for all scales. D flat, almost the same shape, right? A flat, F sharp. B flat. It's almost the same. And what school is with these black note scales? Well, and the white note scales. You can even go more than an octave. You can go continue and then descend. Okay, maybe more on that in another lesson. Fine. So these are the two scales: E major and E flat major. Get used to the shape. Also, what I call is the piano worm, and all the worms for all the scales are printed for you. Check it out. Uh, the resource on Patreon, and also you also should handwrite it. I would highly uh, encourage you to do that. Okay. So as I told you earlier, the challenge with this particular exercise is. the general uh, scales exercise which are taught to students is you go and then you kind of just chill out there like you've climbed a hill or something and you want to i don't know just take a selfie or whatever why wait there right so again you kind of chill out there so let's make the exercise a lot more defined so in short the first time you go up and down add on the descending or rather add on the lower seventh i repeat the first time you go ascending descending you will also add the seventh before the root or before the sa and the second time you go ascending and descending you add a note above the octave first time add a note below the root second time add a note above the octave so let me explain this with e major and then i will explain it with e flat major okay so the job is descend don't repeat that octave so go coming down okay so you will end on the knee and then start again so that knee is also more musical because it 
latches back to the saw it's like a magnet so very musical to my ear and that's how this is how i tend to practice scales so we go you have to bring back your index so sa re ga ma pa da ni sa ni da pa ma ga re sa ni okay and it also syncs up mathematically well it's exactly 16 notes so if you say this is a 16th note pattern your entire bar is completed maybe support yourself with like well like a nice tonic chord which is an e major chord in this case 1 3 5 keep doing that till you're comfortable Let's try the same procedure on e flat major it's actually quite easy for the black scale because you can keep your ring finger there come back okay so coming back to uh, e major let's do the ascending and descending first cycle remember what did i say add the knee at the seventh before the root second cycle you add the nine so totally creating 16 notes per ascending and descending pattern if you want to consider them as 16th notes or you can consider them as eighth notes and then you have two bars of eighth notes it's as simple as that so you go cycle one, cycle 2 started upper f sharp one more time cycle 1 down the to the seventh at the seventh ninth back to root kind of also times itself very well in a 4 by 4 e flat now what musicians also do is they add a lot of dynamics to the performance so start soft maybe and think like a ladder you go up the ladder go a crescendo get louder you know right sometimes your alignment of notes may go busted because you're thinking primarily of dynamics but that's a good challenge to have and that's a good thing to do so keep the dynamics you don't want to do dynamics at the very end of the operation right like some icing on the cake you rather make it part of the the production so dynamics Okay now that's about the right hand that's pretty much what the right hand is going to do throughout the exercise let's now add harmonic flavor by adding stuff in the left hand so with the left hand i just have three simple chords for you and for a detailed breakdown of these we have a couple of videos which are in the description where we talk about the usage of tonic predominant and the dominant chords which can be used for a ton of songs be it classical nursery rhymes folk songs pop songs rock and roll blues whatever so the just to quickly show you The tonic chord will be the 1 3 5 of the scale which is E G sharp B. The predominant chord of the scale will be 1 4 6 which I'm just giving you its scale numbers. Yes, I'm not telling you the official chord name doesn't matter for now. You can figure that out on your own if you wish. So E G sharp B E A C sharp that will be 1 4 6 and lastly the dominant is also what I call the classical dominant chord. find it a lot in classical songs so you go 7 4 5 for the dominant 1 3 5 tonic 1 4 6 subdominant or predominant back to tonic if you want and then you end with a dominant chord okay so let's develop the drill 
the first ascending you will play the tonic chord descending subdominant next ascending back to tonic dominant and end with the tonic let's do that again slowly tonic subdominant or pre going up now to the dominant one more time keep the dynamics let's build the same chords for the e flat scale as well tonic 1 3 e flat g b flat then pre will be e flat a flat c and then d a flat b flat will be the dominant chord or like a seventh chord if you think about it so try to get your chords going get the fingering I understand little trickier when you play certain chords than the other. So I would always recommend before you move on to the right hand try and just see if you're comfortable with the left hand especially the shifting of the chord. For a piano player it's it's never about playing that chord it's always about going from there to the next chord. I think that's a challenge even guitar players have. So you go major or the first tonic predominant back to major dominant now the scale drill in the right hand tonic again dominant back that's e major and e flat major so just to kind of unofficially conclude with the left hand chords and the we might as well look at some patterns so instead of just holding it what i like to do first is just do some block chords sounds quite nice if you ask me just staccato 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 legato at the four at the fourth beat course with the changing chords if you can do that accent at the end try otherwise it's fine ah the other thing is you can do like a umpa pattern which i've taught in earlier lessons you go So just break the chord up you do the root and then the top one so what i like about the umpa is you do the um or the bass note longer and the rest of the broken chord choppy up so try a bit on e flat there we go right so that's some rhythms oh we forgot one more rhythm the arpeggio why would you do anything without the arpeggio so a great left hand pattern arpeggio would be this one works for pretty much anything so you take the chord and you go low note high note middle note high note also what i call as l h m h l and if you can hold the pinky it'll be great and then do the same drill it's arpeggios need a lot of dynamics try that on e 
flat one more time on e flat sometimes you tend to have some fun but you get the idea right guys so that was about the left hand tonic predominant dominant chords with some interesting patterns the blocks the umpa and the arpeggio will be a great start uh, and then you can do other patterns which you might enjoy as well right so in conclusion i just want to leave you with one thing wherein why do major all the time when you practice skills so maybe a good weeks effort could be e major e flat major and then do their relative minors but start with the more popular of the relative minors or the minors in general which is actually our harmonic minor which is the 3 flat and the 6 flat so in other words you do e major and then do e minor then you do e flat major and you do e flat minor thereby you know you don't get bored you always get a different flavor with the minors let's see how e minor sounds beautiful right that's the harmonic sound and if you do the same drill with the minor right another challenging thing with these harmonics is harmonic minors are there's a skip there's a huge jump here or a three step jump an augmented second between the 6th and the 7th so you have to negotiate that especially when you want to climb further Let's try the same thing with e flat harmonic minor slightly easier if you ask me these black note scales so you'll have to adjust your chords the tonic will now be 1 3 flat 5 subdominant will be 1 4 6 flat the dominant can stay the same because it's harmonic minor right i so that's generally how i practice scales i will just pick two or three of them or maybe two or three scales which i don't know remember you have two words you have a key and you have a scale the key is any of the 12 we execute and the scale is the assortment of notes or the permutation of creating seven notes from the superset of 12 right guys so this was a scale exercise for you or well pretty much the same thing you may have already started doing if you've got a little bit of piano knowledge but hopefully it gives you a more creative perspective or a more uh, you know logical perspective that you have to do all these skills don't think that if you do c major it's fine you saw today we started on e major and e flat major and we did it by looking at their shapes the shapes are most important and the piano you cannot survive on the piano by just knowing the shapeless scale which is c major right again this is jason here from nathaniel <clears throat> if you have any questions regarding the lesson do leave them in the comments if you have any suggestion for the lessons in the future do leave them in the comments we are very happy with a lot of your suggestions it's great keep them coming and uh, again don't forget to subscribe to patreon there will generally always be a booklet for every single youtube video we ever do in some cases there could be backing tracks and so on and so forth and if you are a beginner or if you are a student who wants to learn something more regular with our music school which i am part of the nathaniel school of music you could drop us an email you could also hit the registration form or the link in the description and it will take you to wherever you need to be taken to you can also connect with us regarding anything right cheers guys catch you in the next one bye